In this video, we're going to learn how to continuously load data from an S3 bucket into ClickHouse. First of all, we're going to look at some config you need to have on your ClickHouse server for this to work. So let's open our config file and you can see we've got this keeper server config and then under there we've got the log storage path and the snapshot storage path and then a bunch of other config as well. And we're also going to make sure we've got the S3 log configured so that we log any files being processed. Let's close the config file and we're going to set the AWS profile environment variable to S3Q. So that's a profile that I've got on my machine. There are other ways that you can let the ClickHouse server see and get access to your buckets. You can set up the environment variables AWS access key ID and secret access key. And then there's a bunch of other ways as well. And we'll put a link to that documentation in the description below. Let's now start the ClickHouse server and then we're going to come over to this other tab. Again, we'll set the AWS profile and we're going to have a look at the files in our bucket. So it's S3Q clickhouse.com and we'll list those files so you can see we've got 10 files json files there's uh, one bit of json on each line uh, and we've got a hundred thousand records in each file let's have a look at one of those files and one and let's have a look at the first few lines so you can see here it's a, it's a representing a customer order so we've got customer details we've got order details in there as well let's now launch our clickhouse client and we're going to create a table with those fields so in this we'll just put the so add those fields in, so order date, gender, and, and the other fields as well. Then we're going to set our engine to be S3Q, and then the first argument needs to be the, the name of the bucket, and the, the location, and, and the, the suffix at the end will be like, where are the files are in that bucket, so it's going to be forward slash data, star.json. One thing to notice here, I've had to put the region into the into the name. This seems to be a common thing when trying to use the S3 API, so I, I, I had to put it in there because I'm not using the default bucket. Uh, then the next argument is going to be JSON each row, so that's just telling it what type of data have we got in there. Then we've got a couple of settings to configure, so we're going to put the mode. So there are two modes, so we've got ordered, and so what that means is it assumes that your files are in chronological order. So if you're using like a timestamp, like what we are doing, then you can use ordered, and what it means is it will only keep in the metadata the name of the most recent file that's been processed and any that need to be retried due to failures. If you don't know that, that, that it's ordered and you just have like kind of random files uh, coming into the S3 bucket, then you'll want to use the unordered uh, mode instead. Now, the disadvantage of the unordered mode is it has to keep the metadata of all the files. It is, it is configurable, so you, I think it defaults to 1,000, um, but it obviously means that you're keeping more metadata around. And then finally, the other config that we're going to set is the S3Q enable logging, and so to make sure that it's going to log each of the files so that we can see what's actually going on when it's processing them. We're now going to create ourselves a, another table. So we'll, we'll do exactly the same fields as on the previous one. And this time it's going to be a merge tree table. So this is actually going to store the data and then we'll create the sorting key as customer ID and order date. And then finally, we're going to create ourselves a materialized view called orders consumer that's going to put the data into the orders table and it's going to be as select star from orders queue. Now that materialized view reads the data coming in from those S3 files and it forms blocks of rows that it will then insert into the orders table. It then flushes the rows into the table based on the min insert block size config. So I just want to show you what this config looks like. So we're going to use the show settings clause to do this. And so you can see it comes back. And if we look on the top, you can see min insert block size bytes. So that's set to 268 meg. And then if you look a couple of rows down, we've got min insert block size rows, and that's set to 1 million. So those are the defaults. We are then overriding those for the purpose of this video, but just for materialized views. So you can see we've got the bytes set to 2,000 and the rows set to 1,000. So it's going to flush the data into the table every thousand rows, but you probably want to just leave the defaults uh, as they are when you're working with much bigger data sets. Let's come over to uh, another tab and we're going to have a look at a query to count how many records have been ingested. So you can see we're saying from the orders table, just count them and then show a friendly version of the count and we'll put the current time as well. Now we're going to use the watch command to run that and pipe well, to pipe to, to cat that query into the ClickHouse client, and then it will come back. And so you can see here, we've got 665,000 rows have been processed. If we go another second, 765,000, then 798,000, and then finally 1 million. So now everything has been ingested. So let's see what happens if we add some more data. So we're going to use this tool called Shadow Traffic, which is a, a really neat tool that I've discovered recently for generating uh, realistic looking data. So we're just going to get it to create us a sample of one message, similar to the data that we saw before. So you can see it comes back. Uh, it tells us a table called orders, and then it has a row with the data, similar to what we saw uh, when we looked at our uh, other uh, JSON files in the S3 bucket. 
We're now going to put, we want, what, what we actually need there is the row. So we're going to use JQ to just get the row. And then we're going to, I've got a, just a little tiny little script that uploads uh, data into S3 every uh, 100,000. So we're just going to leave that running uh, for a little bit. I'll speed it up uh, for the purposes of the video. And so you can see it then starts uploading the file and it's then uploaded it. And then if we, and then we'll go on to the next one. So it just kind of keeps on, uh, keeps on going until, until you kill it. Uh, and then a few seconds later, you can see it's now doing the next one. And then that one is uploaded too. So it takes about 15 seconds for it, for it to generate a hundred thousand records. Let's now come over to the, to the, to our ClickHouse client again. And we're just going to write a query to have a look at the S3 Q log and we'll order it by the, the processing start time in descending order so we can see the most recent files that have been processed. And so you can see we're actually now up to three files that have just been processed in the last 20 or 30 seconds. And if we come over to our counting tab, you can see that kind of maps up. We're up to 1.3 million rows processed. If we give it a few more seconds, it goes up to 1.4. And then if we sort of speed this up a little bit, we're now up to 1.5 million. And it will keep on ingesting those data while our tool is generating new data and uploading it into S3. Um, so if you liked this video, you might also like this other one up here where we learn how to process JSON files in ClickHouse.